So in honor of doing wedding planning, I figured it would be a great time to do the wedding photographer advice Sunday. I have done almost, it'll be four weddings in August, and I have learned so much in the last three weddings that I've shot as to how I want to do it, uh, how I go about it, and everything like that. So this is more for the beginning wedding photographer, um, just kind of giving you some ideas. This is more advice than tips. I can do a tutorial thing if you want me to, just comment in the description below and give you ideas of what gear I use and stuff like that. So to start out when you are figuring on doing wedding photography is, are you going to do it by yourself or are you going to have somebody else shoot with you? I have the first wedding that I did, I had my best friend help me out on that one and because I couldn't get off work in time to shoot the beginning portion, so she did it instead. If this is shaky, it's because I'm filming on my phone and I'm, I'm a shaky person. I, I couldn't get to it and instead she did like the getting ready pictures and the first look and then she helped me with a lot of the ceremony and reception pictures as well. I have done the last two weddings by myself so I've, I like both. I've done a, with by myself I had two cameras which is another thing you have to consider. Are you going to have one camera or two? If you have one camera, are you going to take into the fact that you need a lens that will be able to shoot not just close-up portraits, but something that might get a little bit further away as well? I shoot with two just for the fact that I have two cameras, and uh, it's nice to have one that has like a kit lens where I can shoot far away pictures, some get some more wide angle pictures going on. Uh, sometimes stuff is a little too close where I can't get it with the 85 mil portrait lens. So um, it's nice to have that smaller lens as well. But it's nice to have the 85 mil portrait lens for your up close and personal pictures as well. So you gotta take into consideration uh, one or two cameras. If, if you have two cameras, it's nice to shoot with both. Uh, if you're shooting with two cameras, I highly recommend getting a double camera sling. I have worked with where I had one camera and a harness and another with a regular strap. That sucked. That hurt. I couldn't figure it out, you know. So a double sling is something to invest in if you are working with two cameras. Uh, B&H is where I got mine. I paid maybe like 30 bucks for it. If you want to go the high-end pricey ones, there's the leather ones that you can get. They are pretty much worth it if you're doing it a lot and plan on doing it full time. Uh, also, take into consideration your clothing. You do not want to wear very bright clothing. I, my mom actually got to see me this last wedding that I shot in my full glory of shooting weddings. And I was wearing a black sweater with black pants. And she's like, you're wearing black to a wedding? And I said, yeah, you know, I don't want to be seen. You don't want to be seen. You don't want to be that bright yellow object moving around the aisleways. And that's where people start to get off of the groom and bride and start watching you. Because they see you coming around and they, they are very drawn to bright objects. And when you've got yellow or a bright purple or something going around it's it's very distracting i recommend like a very dark like navy blue i've worn that uh it had the white flowers on it um i've also worn just dark navy blue with black leggings women honestly make sure you think about if you are wearing a dress how short or how long it is if you have a short dress, you're going to be bending down. There's no no ifs, ands, or buts. There's going to be times where you're bending down to take shots. You just need to think about that. Wear some Spanx underneath or shorts or wear leggings. I have done that. It was an October wedding. I felt like I was dying. It was a really hot October day, actually. So just be mindful, too, of the weather. Uh, definitely. I've just shot a February wedding. 
So I had to have, you know, a sweater on and stuff, but it, it, be mindful too, if you're shooting indoors, it can get a little hot. Now get there early because you're wanting to set your settings. You want to, and if you know the person, which I, I mean, all the weddings I've shot, I've known at least one of the people. So I've offered engagement photos too to some of the couples if they're close by uh, just to get a feel for the person I might not know. I'll know one or not the other and that really helps me kind of get an idea of how the couple is with each other too. Uh, it's very nice. Um, but also get to the venue early or if you know the person do go to a rehearsal dinner or not rehearsal dinner go to the rehearsal not the dinner you don't have to go to the dinner just go to the rehearsal and get an idea of what you want your settings to be i usually do that because sometimes i've learned that when you're shooting in like a maybe a darker moody setting like a, a church or somewhere inside, it tends to be that, you know, you need to make sure those I, that ISO and everything is set right because sometimes you're going to get those super dark pictures. And I was having problems with that and I'm glad I was able to catch that in time where I didn't have like a whole bunch of pictures I couldn't use. And, you know, you're shooting somebody's wedding, so you want to make sure that you have really good pictures, that you're doing the right things. Make sure you're very in tune with your camera and practice before you go to do this because this is somebody's pictures that they're going to have for a very long time and there's somebody's pictures that they're only going to do once hopefully <laughs> there's some people that don't do it once but they're only going to do it once and they want good quality pictures so make sure that you are aware of your camera you do research you have worked with your camera before you're very used to your camera you know how to do portraits practice i just i can't preach that enough practice before you start doing all that stuff especially if you get new lens or new equipment you want to make sure you're very familiar with it so on the day of the wedding you're not in the back making noise or you know not knowing what's going on so i highly recommend you do that Another thing too, if you're getting more into it, you want to do this more, I would highly recommend um, setting up a contract where you have the couple sign at the beginning of everything where you're meeting up with them. I have learned that I am definitely going to be doing a contract from now on just because even though I have done it for friends and family, it's nice to be like, this is where we're at, this is what we agreed upon, it is in writing, and you had signed this and you had agreed upon it. So definitely do that. Make sure the bride does a photo list for you. I like to have that because sometimes you and the bride might not see eye to eye as to what needs to be picture worthy is that at that point so make sure she has a list of family members she wants to take pictures of maybe she wants certain poses make sure you kind of talk to the bride and see uh what she wants in mind what she has in mind i always pay attention to the bride whenever i do weddings just because she's usually the one that's planning this it's her big day she men can give two craps as to what you do sometimes it is mainly what she wants you know and what she she needs out of this as well so make sure that's happening a detail list is also something that you know you need or a details box is something that uh, is very useful do pictures of the rings and get creative with it too. Uh, look up poses and stuff and see what maybe you can do creativity wise. I've done some really cool stuff. I Every wedding has been different as to what poses and what, you know, what I do with it. And it's, it's always going to be different, especially with uh, venues being different and everything like that. I highly recommend if it's your first, very first time doing a wedding, uh, don't be afraid to just be like this is my gift to you if you know the person and not charge them uh, i didn't uh, i didn't want to charge my college friend that i did her wedding for she was my very first wedding that i shot for and i i told her i was not going to charge her this was my first wedding and i wanted to do this as a wedding gift for her so kind of be mindful it is your first wedding and then after that you need to do some research on pricing 
I had no idea how much wedding photographers were until I was shopping for myself. Like until we were shopping for a wedding photographer for our wedding. And I was, I looked at my fiance and I'm like, dude, I'm not charging enough. I was just like, you know, I know this is friends and family that I've been doing this with, but I'm not charging enough. Like these people are charging buku money for that. And also, if you're really going to get into this as well, think about, you know, are you going to offer an all day package? Are you going to offer, you know, so many hours? I know there was a lot of packages and really sh like shopping around for a wedding photographer for us has really enlightened me as to how I go about it now as well in the future, just because I, I don't have anybody to talk to usually. I don't have any photography friends. I don't, you know, I'm it. I'm the person that people go to. I'm, I'm the guy. So uh, just kind of be mindful of, you know, maybe you want to do packages for people, offer engagement photo sessions, stuff like that. I'm, I've thought about doing uh, engagement photo sessions for people on the weekends. Now, <laughs> work's got to get really uncrazy for that, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, but that's some of my advice for you if you're trying to get into doing wedding photography and it's your first time, you have no idea where to start, that is where it's going to happen. Like I said, if you want a more detailed version, uh, I can do a more detailed version. Just comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel too. I try to post every Sunday at Advice Sunday. <laughs> you know, because I will, I love to share uh, some of my photography and show some of how I've come about some of the photography that I do, and also some tips, tricks, advice as to some of the categories of photography that I also shoot. So, for this advice Sunday, we are all wrapped up. My name's Mads, and I hope you like and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can follow some more adventures, some more advice, and some more fun. Until next time.